like we had a status call in the morning without the client. And we're like, yeah, we got approval. Everything was good. We said we do it Wednesday, but why not just push it out today? I'm like, I'm good with that. Yeah. Sent the what client. could go hey, wrong? Gonna... <laughs> right. Oh, we're going to push it out within the hour. Great. All of a sudden, wheels start falling off. Like, yeah. What are we talking about today? Well, let me tell you what we're talking about today. Yes. Basically, we're talking about the title, the working title of this episode is <laughs> it's always a working title and then i that's use a, the working title and then sometimes that doesn't work out for us <laughs> that's such a great idea for an episode let's just talk about whatever the title of the episode right. is <laughs> okay Brilliant. today's title wait for it sharing past projects work you've done with uh, potential prospects a question that comes up when you're applying for a job or are a freelancer, you might have a portfolio on your website or you have a prospect that asks to see work related to stuff that they want done. I am always at that point, I'm like, eh, if I go against all those NDAs I signed, <laughs> here's a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Well, I want to talk even what you mentioned at the beginning of that little comment is when you get asked, because this is something we've talked about. And I don't get asked to show previous work. I don't think as often as it seems like a lot of other people are. I'm asked to talk about previous projects sure, yeah. and explain what I've done and yeah. methods used and all that stuff. But to actually show a portfolio or show deliverables mm -hmm. does not happen very often for me. I have a portfolio and I'm not sure I've ever no, I have sent it to one client, but I very rarely get asked to show it to anyone, mm -hmm. which may speak to just the way I get my freelance projects. It's through word of mouth and through people right. I know, so they kind of already know me. It's weird because I, I have this sense that a lot of people, it's a big issue for people. Mm -hmm. And I see posts on LinkedIn and I've talked to people at meetups and there a lot of them ask about portfolios and best practices and tips right. and tricks and things like that. But some people out there, you might realize this is... You might not realize it's a thing. Like me, I kind of am a little bit in a bubble. And so I don't look at a lot of portfolios for other mm -hmm. researchers or designers. You know, some friends do share them with me just to get feedback. And obviously that's, that's cool. But for me, it's not a thing that people are, clients are constantly asking for. And it's yeah. almost a little insulting <laughs> because I have one. <laughs> I put all this work into and I've done some cool projects. I would like to share that. Maybe, maybe that's the key. <laughs> Yeah, really good portfolio, then no one will ask for it. Now, the one thing it has forced me to do personally is it forced me to think through projects, recent projects and come up mm. with a story. So it's in my head, even though I don't show a document to someone I can say, or in my head, I know I did these three projects recently. And this is the type of research that I did. And I can tell an interesting story right. about each one. Right. I guess that's my tip It's even if you're not going to do a portfolio, at least go through the motions mentally to prepare yourself with some Mm -hmm. anecdotes and stories and you know what you learned and what you did and all those sorts of things what were the yeah. outcomes we know somebody i don't know, actually you know ian fenn right yeah he wrote a book I about do. portfolios i remember yeah, that picture there that's <laughs> right hi ian <laughs> future matthew um <laughs> and great stuff in the book obviously i get asked you know let's see your work maybe they don't necessarily ask for a portfolio using that word, but they might say something like case study. And, and that is something, and I, I, in my head, it's slightly different, but yeah, go ahead. I would say, yes, it's slightly different, but to me, it's the same thing. It's like, show me proof of your past experience is. Right. And I agree. Is. And so, I have been asked for case studies and yeah. deliverables. Yes. Yeah. As a deliverable, not just as, Hey, walk us through something. I have a few things on the studio VO site. It's just text largely because most of the work has been, and most of my work in general has been like internal business stuff, not total consumer, hey, this launched and it's out there. It's, it launched and this company uses it to run their business. <laughs> and I find it challenging from an ethical perspective, especially with those NDAs in place to say, and here's the before and after screenshots, which I have, of course, but I don't put them out there. 
yeah, I definitely struggle with confidentiality, you know, sharing things. Obviously, if something you built or designed or tested is now live, mm -hmm. I consider that free reign. There it is. Anyone sure. can see it. I did that or helped with that. Internal things, depending on the relationship I have with my former client and my potential future client, mm -hmm. I might show things in person, yep. redacted, mm -hmm. take printouts, but I don't deliver them electronically to where they can have them. What I've had happen is they'll ask for it. And when I say, oh, I'm happy to come on site, you know, come to your office, usually it doesn't, doesn't get that far. Like we just move forward. It's almost yeah. like they don't want to call my bluff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he's offering, then he must have it. Like, <laughs> but I want to go back to something, we're talking about like the difference between a portfolio and case studies. Mm. And maybe this is interesting to our, our listener, our viewer. The reason I distinguish between the two, and this could just be a a thing that I do and no one else does is my portfolio. I have it broken up into sections and one is case studies. And that's the stuff we're, we're kind of talking about. Mm -hmm. I think like, here's a project I did, here's what I did, here are the results. Right. And then I've got sections on, I forget what it's called, but it's basically on capabilities of mine. And so it's more about my service offerings and, oh, I run discovery workshops. I do training and here are some of my methods. Right. And so both of those combined in my head, that's my overall portfolio, which never gets shown to anyone. No one ever has to see that. But that first part, the, cap the um, case studies, I do share. So I don't know if you, do you have yours structured in any sort of similar way, or is that just me making, making shit up? <laughs> <laughs> little column A, little column B. <laughs> <laughs> the way I'm thinking about it lately and what I've said to other people when they've asked me to look at their portfolio or, or something like that is... I say, put effort into one robust story about a project that covers the most skills you want to be using in the future. So if you did research, if you did design, you did testing, that kind of thing, if you ran, ran the gamut, as it were, and that's the kind of stuff you want to be doing, or you really want to be doing research, so just really focus on the research aspect of it, but pick one project and make it really good and don't worry about anything else because hiring managers this in this case it's for people who are, are trying to get a job but hiring managers ain't got time for that right um so give them one easy to read easy to understand easy to get to know you story and forget the rest and i've taken that tack with so i have one hidden url thing on my personal site mm. <laughs> if you can find it <laughs> uh, and part of the reason i feel comfortable having it relatively public like that is it's, be it's work that i did that did actually go out on consumer stuff and the company's not around anymore so it, i don't feel beholden to keep secrets about something that doesn't exist and so i put a lot of time into putting that together like on the studio vo site on our on the work page, it describes, you know, who some of the clients were and what the projects were and what the outcome was, but maybe 150 words about it, just a short little, I don't know, it's the idea of having a really robust portfolio that shows this, you know, breadth of work and stuff like that. Just, I don't really want to do that. And I'm not sure that it's going to be helpful. And even if I did put a lot of effort into that, most of it, again, I couldn't show anybody, or at least I don't feel comfortable. Let me rephrase. There are very few uh, cases where I would feel comfortable sharing that. In my case studies, I have a various, some are, I name the client and some, I just create a, you know, kind of generic description of the client. Like this is a consumer electronics company. This is, right. you know, some other generic name. And then, yeah, I read, I redact things from screen, you know, from screenshots or whatever, because yeah, you have to, I believe ethically adhere to whatever confidentiality agreements and DAs you've agreed to. That's an interesting tact on just focusing on one project. Cause I do the opposite. Like you were mentioning on your website, which is kind of how I generally do mine. I've got, mm -hmm. I forget like the top or recent four or five projects I've worked on that I thought were interesting and I've created stories around them. And like I said, all the, all the different uh, attributes and information to me, it shows a breadth of work because they were all slightly different. Like it's not just showing the same type of work over and over again. Right. It's like, oh, on this project I was doing, you know, interviews or I was doing training or I was doing service design or I was doing whatever. And so that's, that was my approach to show my, the breadth of my work across 
you know, by illustrating these different projects. In some respects, it doesn't matter what path you take to doing this. It's as long mm -hmm. as you're able to craft a story that can stand on its own if someone's reviewing it without you there to walk them through it, or that's something that is easy for you to reference as you tell a story. One of the challenges that I've found is prospects saying, well, could we see work you've done that's similar to this? And this is, you know, this is not going for a job. This is going for a consulting gig or something where I'm like, you're in Edinburgh, Scotland, and I'm here and I don't feel comfortable sharing that with you because of this reason. The feeling I get is always, well, but it's just us though, right? And I and I say, well, you you probably want me to sign an NDA to not share what I work on with you, which of right. course the answer is yes. And you wouldn't be comfortable. And they're like, of course that makes sense. Of course that makes sense. Do you have anything you can show us? Like, right? I don't know. It's, I it probably would be easier if I had a a background of a lot of customer facing stuff. I think the biggest ask I get <clears throat> from potential clients around, especially because we focus on research is, well, what am I going to get? Can you show me something? Yeah. Not even so much about the methods, but yeah, what was the end result? Right. What am I paying you for? <laughs> <laughs> and so they want to see that. What thing do I get? <laughs> right. Yeah. What, what do I get? Obviously if we have a conversation about it and I can describe it and yeah, push comes to shove. I can pull up either a keynote or uh, an air table or something I've done. <laughs> like, here's a very pretty spreadsheet you're going to get. <laughs> right. Yeah. This is how I do my raw data analysis. And, and the words mean nothing to them, but it looks impressive and it could just be gobbledygook. But so maybe that's you know, the thing. Maybe we can create just a, a standard basic deliverable of the main, main deliverables that, that a lot of people in our profession do. Mm -hmm. And it's all stupid. It not literally Lorem Ipsum, but like right. stuff. It might as well be. And everyone you know, and shares I, that. <laughs> yeah, and I focus on the columns. Like, here's how I'm breaking down the data. Yeah. Yeah, you know, there's severity, there's themes. And, and that seems like that's what they want to see or know about. Like, oh, yeah, okay, so we're going to get all this stuff and you're going to categorize it and come up with insights. And it doesn't matter what I did for this other company because it's meaningless to you. You don't even understand the context. They want to see something. And on some level, I get it. They're paying money. They want to know what's, mm -hmm. what to expect. And yeah, you know, I think as far as setting expectations, I think it's important. So at the end or near the end, when you're getting done and you know what you're going to be showing them and they know what you're going to be giving them, yeah. it's in alignment. So they're not expecting some big video presentation or something, unless yeah. that's what you do. And then awesome. <laughs> and if that's what we agree to, I can show them, Hey, here's, we'll do video clips. And I think like a lot of things in our work, there's compromise when you're having these conversations mm -hmm. and there's a little bit of a gut instinct that you have to utilize. Obviously without breaking any ethical agreements you've, you've got on, on your, on your plate, you know, sometimes you have to give a little just to get the client or potential client to feel yeah. better about it. And again, this is more the consulting world to get a job, like a full-time job. It might be a little different because you wanted to show your skills, but more than likely you're going in there, depending on the level that you're going in there, you're, you're going into a pre-existing environment. Yeah. And so you almost just want to kind of want to fit in <laughs> to an established world sometimes. Right. Yeah. It is, it is different. And I, I get that there's difference. I just personally don't have a lot of experience doing the, the full-time show and tell recently. I know this is a while ago, but when you were managing people and you were hiring, mm -hmm. would you look at portfolios? I would. And at the time I was hiring designers, visual and interaction designers, and I would have them present screens to me or designs and have them walk me through their thought process. It wasn't so much about what was on the page, but how it got on the page, I like to say. Yeah. You know, what were the constraints? What tell me about the project? And it's the same thing. Like, tell me the story right. of this thing. How did you arrive at this result? I would, but I would never ask if someone said, I can't show you this, it's confidential. Then I would say, Well, could you just block out <laughs> any right. company names or you know, even terminology? <laughs> right. But again, as long as you can talk to it or, at, you know, say worst case, I would tell people just make something up, you know, almost like a pro bono project, just come up with a page or a product, design something for it. Just, I want to see the thought process and some level of, you know, at the time, like basic interface principles that were being applied. It's been on my mind lately mm -hmm. because I've run into it more. I always have that moment when, could you show us 
a deliverable or you know what we're going to get out of this or an example or work you've done previously in this domain. And it, this may be because I've been doing a little bit more work through other agencies. They want to see the work. The, the stuff that we've worked on, you and I have worked on over the past few years, there's really only one thing that I can share. And uh, in case you didn't know, that's <laughs> going away. <laughs> they're they're oh, yeah, cutting yeah, it yeah. down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so now you can show it. <laughs> now I can really show it. <laughs> <sighs> yeah anyway so that's not, we did the other thing that did not go away the other big thing but the other big anyway. thing did not go away but that's something that we can't like we can't show crow much. about you know right right and and part of the ask on that again was make this deliverable look terrible because right. we want it to be something that the team who inherits this you know we don't want it so shiny that they don't want to touch it and so we we did that, <laughs> and that's part of the exploration. Sure <laughs> yeah, I I have look at this some... purposely terrible work, <laughs> not terrible work, you know. Right? No, I've showed it and I've explained to people, and yeah, I've hidden the the client's name and all the yeah. specific terminology in that. And I know what you're talking about. <laughs> we spent a lot of time building that thing, but yeah, this is. And again, I, I lay it out like you did. I've only shown it to one person, just to be clear. But like, yeah, this was just like you said. It was that the ask was keep it messy, keep it not looking polished so people can rip it apart later and yeah. keep keep working on it. And we did it. Yay. <laughs> it looks crappy because <laughs> that's what they asked for. I don't know that there's an answer and I wanted to just talk about it a bit. I think Ian probably the, has an answer. The answer to what specific question? Like how, what, what do you, the, what, are show? what do you do when you don't have anything you can show? Right. This is different from, Hey, I'm, I'm new to UX and I don't have a UX portfolio. Now I need to make something up or something. Right. I don't mean it like that. I mean, it's, it's either you're going for a job or a prospective client has said, I want to see a deliverable, or I want to see work you've done that's related to this. And I've done the work, I've done the deliverable, but I will not show you or, or, you know, here are the conditions that would allow me to show you and yeah. you're not going to fly me over to Edinburgh. Right. I said, the only other thing I do is just black out things yeah. possibly to the point where it's, Meaning well, that's, this, that's but... what I, th I think, right? If I, I look at some of these screens, sometimes I'm like, if I have to black out all the information on this screen that's right. important to black out, it's going to be a mostly blacked out, <laughs> excuse me, a mostly right. blacked out screen. Or we go back to, this would take more time, but going into the document and just changing the words from company names or specific terminology to yeah. alternate words right. to make a, a sanitized version of it. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Thank you. <laughs> just made that up right that's not a bad idea yeah. and, and it'll look nicer than the black bars and honestly what i've done i don't use the black bars i use white bars because a lot of my stuff's on a white background yeah. so there's gaps so it's just blank <laughs> it's just blank and it's quicker than changing the text and it looks nicer than big black bars everywhere i was going for a classical redaction <laughs> <laughs> classic fbi redaction that's right <laughs> not yeah. that they were my client no <laughs> right no no so another thing i wanted to talk about with portfolios that i've seen recently and for whoever might be watching is to look for resources i see a lot of people here in the atlanta community offering up you know portfolio peer reviews mm. which i think is really cool and it seems to be catching on so if you're out there and you found this video and you're looking for advice or feedback check your local ux research design whatever community and don't be afraid to look out look up people that might be willing to do this. I've had very see, people more senior than me reach out to me in the past few months that have wanted to do like a, a show and tell with portfolios. So I've met people at coffee shops and it's interesting to see if like you and I, everyone has different tactics on how they approach it. I've definitely learned stuff from them. They've learned stuff from me, hopefully. That's, I think it's beneficial. So if you're out there thinking you're on your own and out of ideas, just go ask someone you trust or admire for help. Right specific to our profession, it's pretty typical to take something you've designed and get feedback on it before putting it out right. there in the world. So right. why not apply the same thought process to your portfolio or case studies or, or however you put it? Yeah. <laughs> Nails here. Yeah, we're starting that process this year through the PDX HCD thing. 
get a small group of people together, not specific necessarily to portfolios, but not exclusive of that, where it's basically critique sessions. You know, mm -hmm. if you're working on a project, it could be your portfolio, it could be work, put it on the table and let us all tear it apart. <laughs> I've floated that idea and I haven't had really any takers. We tried to do a lunch around it and didn't quite go how I thought it would. We're just going to experiment what we're going to do. When I say me, it's really Peter Russo who's driving it, but we're going to do two of them with a small group of people basically to test out how it runs. Mm -hmm. And then if that goes okay, we'll open it up to the public as a quarterly scheduled event or something like that. That's cool. I'm curious to see how it goes. Yeah, me too. I think it'll be, it, it'll at least be a worthwhile experiment, right? Speaking of experiments, if we completely left our topic, <laughs> something else. Well, I thought me. that was related, somewhat related. Oh, that, that is related. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. It was related. You Come are on. absolutely right. I'm wrong. You're right. So what else can we talk about with yes. portfolios? Portfolios are great. Case studies are great too. Case studies are even better. In my they're opinion. not the same thing. They're not, ex to me, they're not exactly the same thing. See you next time. <laughs> like and subscribe. Classic. All right. Good show, people. Good show.